So how does a calculator find the square root of a number? Okay, fine. How does a calculator app find the square root of a number? Think about it for a moment and it's not an obvious question. Hitting the square root button gives an answer so quickly it's easy to forget that under the hood there's some non-trivial stuff going on. So here's a little exercise for you. Imagine you have no access to a computer. I don't know, you're, you're on a desert island or something. Okay, and you have to calculate the square root of 612. Why would you have to? I don't know, just imagine something, okay? You need it to build an escape raft or something. Just go with me on this. Right, square root of 612. How would you do it? The first thing you might try is pretty basic, and we'll call that the octopus method. Octopuses are actually pretty smart. They can open jars and solve puzzles and everything, so it seems plausible they'd manage this one. The octopus might start by asking, well, which perfect squares are closest to the number on either side? Find those, and the square root you're looking for is somewhere in between. So the octopus bisects them to get the next estimate and checks what the square of that number is. And if it's too high, then the octopus knows the square root is on the lower half of that range. If it's too low, then it's in the upper half. So it splits the range again to get a new estimate, checks whether its square is too high or too low, and keeps on repeating, getting closer and closer to the real answer. It's a simple algorithm. Find suitable bounds for your answer using your knowledge of perfect squares, choose a value halfway in between, square it and compare, split the remaining interval, and keep on iterating until you reckon you're close enough. So, go on, calculate like a cephalopod. Try this one out for yourself. Find the square root of 612 to, I don't know, five decimal places. Okay, so if you actually did that exercise, you'll note that the closest perfect squares to 612 are 24 squared, which is 576, and 25 squared, which is 625. So the square root of 612 is between 24 and 25. So, split the difference, the new estimate is 24.5. Now 24.5 squared is 600.25, which is lower than 612. So the octopus knows that the answer must be between 24.5 and 25. Split that difference and the new estimate is 24.75. The square of that is 612.5625. And the octopus keeps going and going and going. The problem is that while the octopus's method does work, it's pretty slow to converge. It takes around 15 iterations to get five decimal places of precision. If only there was a quicker way. Well, it turns out, there is. And it was discovered, oh, about 4,000 years ago in ancient Mesopotamia. Amongst the remains of the old city of Babylon in what we now call Iraq, some old clay tablets have been found with inscriptions on them that contain the square root of two to an amazing degree of accuracy. And these date back to something like 1800 BC. Now, why would the old Babylonians need to know about square roots? Well, they were interested in calculating land areas and volumes of produce and architectural calculations, and they were pretty keen on astronomy too. And there's only so far you can get with integers and perfect squares. Eventually, you need things like square roots. So how would an ancient Babylonian go about calculating a square root? Well, they start the same way as the octopus. Find a couple of bracketing perfect squares and choose halfway in between as your first estimate. But they also knew something pretty interesting. If your estimate x is lower than the true answer, then s divided by x will be higher. And the reverse is true also. So the next step is find the average of x and s over x and use that as your new estimate. And like before, just keep iterating until you get to the accuracy that you want. So go ahead, give some 4,000 year old maths a shot and calculate the square root of 612 to five decimal places with the Babylonian method and see how long it takes. So, those Babylonians were onto something, right? See how quickly their method converges? It took the octopus about 15 iterations to get to five decimal place accuracy, but this technique gets there in just three iterations. Not feeling so smart now, are you, cephalopod? Now, if you happen to share your desert island with Sir Isaac Newton, what? It could happen. Anyway, Newton would say, actually, what you should do is use some calculus. You start in the same way. You find a couple of bracketing perfect squares to make your first estimate. But then 
realize you're actually solving for the roots of a function. f of x is equal to x squared minus s. So find the derivative of that function, and then your next estimate is your previous estimate minus the function at your previous estimate divided by the derivative at your previous estimate. And you can iterate that over and over again, and it converges incredibly quickly. And Newton's method works brilliantly, as long as the function is fairly well behaved and you can actually find the derivative. And because it converges so quickly, this is effectively the method that's used by calculators and computers when they want to find square roots. Though the Babylonians might point out that, for square roots at least, Newton's method is exactly the same as the Babylonian method found 4,000 years previously. Newton would counter that, well, his method is more general, but still.